Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do one of those dreaded heater cores on a 99 to 2005 Pontiac Grand Am. Now this one happens to be a 2004 era. Um, this is also the same for a lot of other end bodies. Uh, Oldsmobile Alero, Oldsmobile Cutlass, and Chevy Malibu. Um, yeah, I think that was all they had. But those are going to be a little different on where the bolt placement is for the dash and the console. But other than that, the job is pretty much exactly the same. So, just to be clear, I've rebuilt over 300 of these cars and worked on another few hundred of them, and I've never actually had to change a heater core. So it's not a common failure, even though it is kind of a pain in the butt job. Um, we're gonna get it done. I have pulled plenty of these dashes, and we have to do that. So let's pull the dash out and get our heater core changed. It's really not that hard. It could be worse, I guess. So I already have the center console out of this thing because I did some interior work on it before, and I knew I'd be doing this job, so I just left it out, make my life a little easier. So at the end of the video, when I put the center console back in, the removal is just the opposite of putting it back in. So it's pretty simple. Uh, we're changing this heater core not because it's leaking or anything. Uh, the engine in this car had bad head gaskets, and they dumped a bunch of stop leak and water in it, to keep it running or try and fix it. So that in turn plugged up the radiator, not the actual crack in the radiator that caused the bad head gaskets, but still plugged up the radiator. So I suspect that the heater core won't be far behind. We're going to change it to avoid having those annual flushes to get all that junk out of there and keep the heat working. So the new owner has nothing to worry about when they buy the car from me. So we'll have a little headache now. They'll have a car with no problems later. So we're gonna start by removing the seats. We'll unbolt the back of them, then remove the headrest, tilt them forward, and they slide right out of there. Pretty simple. We need to take these seats out because we need to roll the carpeting back a little bit to get the stuff that's underneath them. Now these dashboards come out in two different ways. They can come out in a complete assembly or they can come out in pieces. I'm gonna try taking it out just in pieces because I don't need to take all of it out to be able to get to the bottom of the heater box where the heater core is. If you wanna take the entire dash assembly out, there's a whole bunch of wires you have to disconnect under the hood. You have to discharge the AC system. And there's a couple of studs that go through the firewall that are pretty rusty on the other side and figured I'd probably break them off. So if I can avoid taking all those off, I will. Worst case scenario, I find out that I end up having to take the whole assembly out and I'll just put it back together and put it in as an assembly. Best case scenario, I found a real shortcut. Now we have our seats out of the way, our center console's already out, so now we can disconnect our shifter. I put all this stuff back in the last time because I wanted to drive around a little bit. I didn't need a center console. Disconnect our shift cable. Pull the interlock cable off. And then we pull our shift cable out of the bracket. Try not to stab our fingers. And our shifter is free. Well, except for these pesky wires on the side. Pop the harness out of there. And toss that in the back seat. Now we can pull our carpeting back. We're just going to fold it back. We need to take the rest of it out. We just need to be able to see the ductwork that runs on the floor underneath the carpeting. So we can see all that. Pull it off the floor. We'll leave that side in there because the wiring harness is attached to it. The driver's side we can toss in the back seat. Now we can pull the hush panel off the bottom of the dash on the passenger side footwell. And we can unbolt the duct from the bottom of the heater box. That's what that other duct from the floor goes into. And it's really kind of a pain to get that piece out of there, even though it looks like it would slide right out. Uh, it's oddly shaped. So we're going to end up pulling the dash cover off. So first to do that, we got to pull our radio out of here. Unplug that. We gotta twist the antenna wire off. We're trying not to leave the end of the antenna wire at the back of the radio, which does happen a lot if you pull on the cable. So we need to pull on that little end and there's not that much of it exposed. So a little twisting, praying and hoping and we saved it. Pull our HVAC controls out. 
and unplug all of our vacuum lines and wiring to the back of that. All this stuff I'm just throwing in the back seat. There's a couple of screws behind it. That's why we had to take those out. We buzz those out of there. Open the glove box, pull all the screws out of that. Disconnect the switch for the light and toss that in the back seat. Disconnect the ignition switch. And we'll pull the cover off the side of our dash. Then we can get to the airbag wire. Unplug that. And stuff it up in the dash. We can unbolt the bottom of our airbag and push it out of there. And then fish that wiring harness up around the ductwork that it's trapped behind. The tape on this wiring harness is pretty old and brittle. It pretty much disintegrates in your hand. So we'll set that on the floor so it's not getting our backseat all dirty. We can unplug our wiring harness. There's a bolt in the center that holds it in tight and just pry it out of there. There's a couple more bolts on the side of our dashboard. And one inside where the airbag was. We'll pop our A-pillar trim off of there. Toss that in the back seat. Now we're going to pull the top trim piece off of our steering column. Just unclips in the front and then slides into two tabs in the back. And we can get to the bolts in the bottom of our cluster bezel. There's a couple of Phillips screws in the top of our cluster bezel. And we'll pull that out and toss that in the back seat. And now we can unbolt our cluster and slide it out of there and then unplug it. A couple of screws behind that and bolt those. And we'll get the screws on the side and we'll pull the hush panel on the driver's side down. There's a couple of screws on the top where a plastic vent cover used to reside before the sun ate it. We'll pull those screws out of there. And our dash is somewhat loose. We're gonna unbolt the multi-function switch. We're gonna get our dash panel ready to come off of here. Even though we can do it with just having it loose, I need to take it out of here because I wanna re-glue it because it's starting to separate. So we're not gonna take it all the way out yet because I wanna make sure that I can do it without pulling the whole dash cover off. So our dash cover is loose. Just gonna pull it back a little bit. And pull the cowling off the bottom of our steering column. That'll give us a little bit more room to move that dashboard back. It was hanging up on that. And there we go. Gave us an extra couple inches. A couple inches matters. We'll rip out this aftermarket microphone that's in our way. Once we moved the dash, the bottom of the heater box just kind of fell off of there since we had all the screws out of it already. Now we just got to weasel it out of there and see what kind of treasures await us. Echo Bell packets. You're my forever. So we bungee corded our dash up to where the sunroof opening is. And if your car doesn't have a sunroof, I guess you can't change the heater core. Those are our heater hoses right there and there. I don't know how much of this you're going to be able to see with me in the way, but I'll give it a shot. Spring clamps. Yay. So we're just going to move the clamp back on the hose and then try to break the hose free from the heater core itself. We don't have to be too gentle on it. If we break it, it doesn't matter. We're changing the heater core anyway. But I don't wanna to have to pull heater core pieces out of the back of our hose, so we're gonna to try to just break it free. This is a good use of our remote hose clamp pliers, because getting a pair of pliers back there is not easy. Once the heater hose struggle is over, we can unscrew the bracket that holds the bottom of our heater core in to the heater box. We don't have to take it all the way out. 
just loosen it up, spin that bracket around the other way, and our heater core should drop out of here. It's a pretty straight shot. If they hadn't put all that other stuff in the way, this wouldn't be a bad job. The hardest part is getting that bottom piece back up there. Now we're going to try to get our heater core out of here without dumping what's left of the antifreeze all over the inside of the car. So far so good. Doesn't look like there's any leaks. This is a little bit better look at the bottom of our heater box. You can see the bracket for the heater core is just turned around the other way. We're going to take that screw all the way out of there. Getting it started when the heater core is in there is kind of difficult. So now we're ready to stuff our new heater core in there. Slide it through the firewall. We'll set it into the heater box and then we can start tightening up that screw for the bracket on the bottom. We'll go as far as we can with our fingers. Which is usually just far enough to let go of it and have it fall on you. And now we're just praying it's not going to fall. And we've got a ratchet in there. There's barely enough room in there. Tighten up that bracket. Once we have it tightened up in there, we're going to check and make sure it's sitting in there properly. Otherwise, putting this cover on is going to be even more difficult than it's going to be already. Everything looks good. Looks like it's sitting where it should. So we're ready to put that cover on. Now the problem with this cover is the padding on the floor is actually behind the dash. So there's no way to take it out of there. And you need to kind of force this thing down and then in and then go straight up. Because if you try to push it in, it won't clip into the heater box. The heater box is kind of a C channel and this is slotted to go up inside it. So it has to go down and then back up after you push it in there. It's really kind of a pain, but it's still better than taking the entire dash out. This is really the only struggle. And if this piece goes in without a problem, we don't have to take the dash pad off to do this job. If it doesn't go in there, well, then we are going to have to take the dash pad off. We're just going to try to get one side started, and as if this job wasn't hard enough already, there's a tube that sticks out of this piece that goes through the firewall for the drain tube for the evaporator core. So we're fighting that at the same time. We got one side in. Now we're going to try to slip the other side in that little groove. And it slipped right in. Apparently all the struggle was on the other side. Now that I've proven to myself that we can do this job without pulling the entire dash pad all the way out, uh, we're going to pull it out because I need to glue the top of it. So in order to take that out, we need to take the steering wheel off. In order to take the steering wheel off, we have to pull our airbag out. So I had to run home and grab my socket. It's a T30 Torx that's so very long. So you can go inside and get to the bolts that hold our airbag in. steering wheel the other way and we get to the bolt on the other side once we unscrewed the clips from the back of our airbag the airbag just pops out of there disconnect the horn wires then we'll disconnect the airbag wire Then we'll set our airbag in the back seat. Center our steering wheel. Not that it matters. But it's a force of habit from back when it did matter. We'll disconnect our wire for our cruise control switches. And then we can unbolt our steering wheel. And we'll install our steering wheel puller. Just a little wiggle and pull. A lot of pull. Just a little bit of wiggle. And our steering wheel comes off of there. You can't use an actual puller for that, but well, I'm too lazy to walk back to the toolbox and get it. So now we'll untangle our wiring harnesses that are going to keep us from taking this dash pad out. And we're just going to slide it right over the steering column. 
in theory. There we go. And try to figure out how I'm going to get out of the car and it's going to get out of the car. I decided I'll get out first. And then we'll take it out the passenger side. And it doesn't want to leave. Probably should have taken the rest of that hush panel off the bottom. Now we're going to try some windshield urethane. That's what I usually use to fix this. And so far all the ones I've ever done have stayed put better than the factory did. So I'm going to keep using it. It's multi-purpose. It's also a dash pad glue, I guess. You're not going to be shy. You're just going to put a bunch of it in there. Whatever squishes out, we'll just cut off later. This one's pretty bad. So it'll be the real test. I did try to heat it up because it's pretty brittle. This thing sat in the sun for a long time and wasn't quite enough. It's brittle enough that even when it's hot, it's cracking. So that's not going to work. And it's also separating the bottom of the foam part is starting to come off. So even if I manage to glue that down, I don't know that the rest of it's going to stay. So we'll try a new strategy. Paint sticks. It'll distribute the load a little more evenly, hopefully push more of it down, and maybe even keep the dash from cracking anymore. And it's still cracking. So we're just going to continue to glue the rest of this down and leave the rest of it. It's not worth it. We're going to have to settle for a peeled up dash because otherwise we're going to have a cracked and partially peeling dash. We'll just finish what we started here and leave the rest. Oh well, I tried. So now while our urethane dries, we can finish putting our heater core back in here. We'll bolt this cover back up underneath. There's one last screw I can't get to with the electric ratchet, so we'll do it by hand. We'll clip the wiring harness back in. Then we're ready to put the duct on the bottom of the cover that we just put on. Put that in. There's a couple wiring harnesses to clip in there. And we put our little air tube in the bottom of that duct. Just squeezes in. There's a slot in there. And it'll clip in. Give it a good wiggle. Make sure it's in there. And we're ready to slide our floor ducts in. We'll clip in the passenger side that had the wiring harness attached to it. At least we're going to try. There we go. We'll clip it back onto the floor so we get our wiring harness out of here. Then we can roll our carpeting back down. Slide the end of the ducts through it. We'll tuck it up underneath our brake and gas pedals. Then we'll head over to the passenger side. Tuck that underneath. Pull our cables out before we bury them in there.
And now we can go up front and reconnect our heater hoses. And slide them over our new heater core. And slide our spring clamps back. And if you're looking for the remote spring clamp pliers, those are available in my Amazon store. And our dash is kind of dry. Got a nice crack in the top of it, although it is stuck down now. So this one was beyond repair. You can see the discoloration in the top of the dash from how dry it is. This was one of the worst ones I'd seen. Probably the worst one I'd seen. The bottom of it's peeling. It's peeling all around our gauges and our heater controls. And unfortunately, it's the only one I have, so it's going back in the car. We'll fish our wiring harnesses out of there because they always want to get trapped underneath the dash. Once the wiring harnesses have fallen in line, we can set our dash all the way up there. There's some alignment pins and a metal bracket that it attaches to to help you line it up. A couple more wiring harnesses that are still trying to get in my way. These are for our multifunction switch. And of course, one of them is trapped behind our dash. Now we can start putting all our bolts back in our dash pad. Bolt in our ignition switch. And we'll plug in our radio. Put the antenna back in since we managed not to break it and we can. And there's two plugs that go up on top of the radio so we'll make sure we don't leave them behind the radio. Bolt our radio in. Put the screws in behind the cluster and put the cluster in. Plug it in first and tuck it back in its little house. Put the screws in the top and we'll put our bezel in. Bolt our bezel in. The bottom screws actually hold the cluster in as well. And then we can put the Phillips screw in the top of our cluster bezel. We can bolt in the side of our dash and the one screw underneath the airbag. A couple of screws in the bottom of the dash. And we'll plug our fog light switch back in and our dimmer switch. We'll just clip that in. Screw in this side of the dash in the bottom. Plug in our wiring harness. And tighten that down. Click. And put our cover back over it. We'll drop our airbag in here. We need to fish this wire over the duct and through the woods and out the side of the dash. fingers up there, drop our airbag in, and we can plug it all in, put the safety on and clip it back into the dash, and bolt our airbag in. And we can clip in our wiring harness and tighten that down. Put the cover back on and reinstall our club box. Plug in our light. Glove box in there and screw it all in. We can plug in our HVAC controls. And clip them in and bolt them down. And we can install our multifunction switch, plug in all the plugs, set it down in there. And then we'll push in the contact for the horn. If you don't, you mess up the back of the cancel cam. 
then we can drop it all the way down and bolt it in. Then we can put the shroud on the bottom of the column, bolt that in. Install our tilt lever and put the shroud on the top. Clips in in the back. Once the back tabs are in, just clips in on the front. There's a bolt in the top of our dash. Now we can get our airbag ready to install. The clips that we unscrewed from the back, we're just going to screw them right back into the airbag. The airbag just pushes in to reinstall it. Tighten those down. Click. We'll put our steering wheel back in. Run the wires through it. Line up the splines and slide it on. And then tighten it down. Make sure you really torque it on there for the next guy. So he's got to do a lot more wiggling and pulling. Plug in our cruise switches. Now we're ready to install our airbag. We'll clip our airbag in. Flip all the wires into the back of it. Plug in our ground for our horn. And plug in our horn wire. Just pushes in and twists about 90 degrees. And then locks in. Make sure our wires aren't going to get trapped behind our pins. Line up our pins and push it in. Make sure it's clipped all the way in there and press the horn a couple times. Alright. And now we're ready to put our hush panel back up underneath the driver's side. Screw it in. And there's another half of the hush panel. So slide that one up in there. The clip on the firewall that holds the back of it. Slide that on. There's a tab that goes up under the other hush panel. And then one little push pin that goes in the outside edge. Then we can do the one on the passenger side. This one slides into the heater box. It's also part of the duct work. Screw that in. We'll spin the little outer piece in. We just got a tab that slides into that other one we just put in. Now we're ready to put our shifter back in. Slide the cable through. Put into our bracket. Put in the interlock cable. And we can set it down on the studs. Down. We also installed the bracket on the back that holds our center console in. We connect all of our cables. Plug in our harness and our center console is ready to go in here. So get it over the shifter. We'll rock it down into place. Line up the boot on the e-brake handle. pins for the bottom of the console on the dash and push it forward. Bolt in the back of the console, put our little Christmas trees in the side, our bolts in the front, and we're ready to bolt the dash to our center console. Ratcheting wrench is the easiest way to get to these nuts on the back side. We can put our bezel around our shifter. It's marked for the front of the car. As long as that's towards the front of the car, it just pushes right in there. We'll put our cup holder and coin tray in there. And put our screws back in the bottom of it. Shifter handle on there and put our little lock tab in there. A little easier now that we can take it out of park. 
And if that little tab won't go all the way in there, grab yourself a ratcheting hammer and knock it in there. And then we'll slide the boot up. Make sure it works. And then we'll drop our bezel in here for our radio. Plug in our cigarette lighter, our traction switch, and our hazard switch. And we'll push the bezel back on there. We'll put the cover around the ignition lock. Put the key in there. And decide to take it back out. And we can put our sill plates back on. The front of the driver's side slides around the hood release handle. And then just clips into the floor. We can drop our seat in here. Get those front tabs lined up. Lift it forward, uh -huh. drop into place, slide the seat forward, and line up our bolt holes in the back. We can slide our covers over them and bolt them down. We'll plug in our power seat. I don't know why, because you know it doesn't work, because, well, it's a grand dam and it's more than six minutes old. Now over to the passenger side to install that sill plate. That one clips into the A-pillar. And line up the tabs across the bottom. And smash it in with your belt molding installation tool. And we can drop our seat in here. Hopefully with cigarette burns. Rock it in though. Engage those front tabs. And bolt it down. No covers on this side. Okay. Install our headrests. And we'll clip our A pillar trim back up there. It slides into slots on the dash. And just smash it on there. And pull the gasket out around it. Head over to the driver's side and put that one in. It's a little hard to get in those slots in the dash since the dash is curling up around it. We'll just force it in there. Get the gasket out of there. We topped off the antifreeze, took it for a little ride. We have plenty of heat and no leaks. So I'd call this job a success. It really wasn't that bad after all. I had a little over two hours invested in the whole heater core swap. Uh, so man, it's not too bad. It is kind of a pain climbing under there, but hey, there are much worse ones. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.